Here amongst the shadows of the Narracourt Caves, there are stories to be told. It's through this narrow crevice that in 1969, Rod Wells and Grant Gattrell crawled through on their bellies as they were exploring these caves. What did they discover? Let's find out. After crawling on their bellies a little further, this is what they found. An extraordinary chamber whose secrets were revealed. This is Thylacaleo carnifex, one of the animals found in here. And we have here a fully articulated skeleton, the whole thing. One of my favorite things about this is if you have a look at the teeth, they're kind of like scissors and it would slice the meat, crush the bone, because it also had pound for pound, possibly the strongest jaws of any mammal that has ever lived anywhere on the planet. This is a Stenurin, known as a short-faced kangaroo. So unlike modern kangaroos with their long snouts, these didn't eat grass. These kangaroos would have eaten leaves from trees or possibly from shrubs and bushes. Narakot is also a great place to discover some of the amazing ways in which art and science have got together. Like that singing thing that I do. I like a Leo. As you enter Narracourt from the northern side, you're greeted by this iron sculpture of a Daprotodon. If you come into town on the south side, there's this lovely wee family. When you first drive into the caves, you've got this wonderful scene. Come to the caves and you can't miss this old friend, of course. Make your way to the art gallery and you'll find this beautiful mural that'll give you some sense of what it was like when the animals from the caves were alive. Inside the art gallery, an exhibition of artworks was held by the very young people of Narracourt. While in the town hall, a performance was put together by the community, for the community, of the stories of the prehistoric community. Here in the Wanambi Fossil Centre, you get to meet animals like Diprotodon and lots of the other animals that we find in and around the caves in what was a collaboration between artists and scientists to try and give us some idea of what these animals looked like when they were alive. What are some of the stories of where you live and how can they be told? That's over to you.